absolute hell. Like, I could sit here all day and tell you what he did to me. He put me in physical therapy for two months. So there's physical abuse? Yeah. He, Mental abuse? Yes. Emotional abuse? Yes. And sexual abuse? As much as I don't want to admit that, yeah. I told him, I told him straight up, like, he is a really dangerous person. You should not let him be here. I just feel guilty because I didn't do anything when I had the chance. I got scared of having to testify, and now look what happened. Looking for a principal, Astorita? She will not be meeting with you. It's, it's just sick. How can a sex offender be on the registry and still be sitting in a classroom? Who supported a whole bunch of different people? Okay, okay, okay. I was outraged. The taxpayers ought to be outraged. Something needs to be done. This is a very serious situation. Sex offenders have no place in our schools, period. My name is Kai McDaniel, I'm 18 years old, and I'm a senior at Parkville High School. I met him in school through a mutual friend. I was going through a really, really bad time in my life, and I, I, I needed somebody to help me get through it, and I didn't want to be alone, because I felt so empty. I feel like I needed to fill that void. and. He knew that. He knew I was vulnerable. I was practically playing Russian roulette with my life, and he accompanied that. Like, he was a part of that with me. He was in that scene with me, you know what I mean? Like, like me doing reckless things, he was right next to me willing to do it. So I was telling him, like, look, if you don't take this plea deal, you can look at 10 years for something you didn't know. And at the time, I believed him, because at the time, I was vulnerable, and I was just looking for somebody to care. And I really thought he was telling me the truth. My name is Chris Pabst. I'm a journalist for Fox 45 in Baltimore. I work on a team called Project Baltimore. We investigate the public education system in the state of Maryland. When we first found out about this, we thought, there's no way this can happen. There's nobody who would allow this to happen. Santino Sudano was now 21 years old and already a registered sex offender. And under state law, sex offenders are not allowed to be inside of a public school. What we didn't know is that there is a loophole. Sex offenders can be in a school if they get a letter of permission. They knew, they knew he was a predator and they still let him come around the school and be around underage kids 
Like, what did they think was going to happen? I didn't want to have sex with him, and he didn't. <laughs> thing about Santino is he will not take no for an answer. He will get what he wants through any means possible. I remember I told him no, and the next thing I know is I'm being held down by my throat and my clothes are being taken off. And that's when it started. And I actually remember when, when he was done with me, I walked all the way home and it took me longer to get home because he hurt me so bad that it messed with my walking. I had to walk home at 12 o'clock at night. Get, didn't get home until one. <sighs> of course I didn't say anything. I mean, I come home, my grandma's upset that I was out so late, <laughs> but it's not like I told her I had just been raped. I just told her I'm sorry, I won't do it again, and then I went upstairs to bed. And I just, I just wrote everything down. Everything I could remember it was in that book, and it still is. Yeah, I told them, I told them straight up, like, he is a really dangerous person. You should not let him be here. He raped me. He did this to me. Why is he still in this school? And every single time they tell me, oh, he has a right to an education. What about my right as a sexual assault survivor to not have to go to school with my rapist? Where are my rights during all this? How come he's valued more than me? Uh, yes, I know. My name is my name is Chris Pabst with Fox 45. I'm seeing if your principal is available. We've been trying to get a hold of her. You just opened it. It's the left door. So you're inviting us inside? You keep pushing the button as we're trying to talk to you. You oh. had the door open. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. All right, come on in. Okay, I mean, I, you should know that, that we have a camera here. And At this point, Santino Sudano was already convicted of sexually assaulting a 13-year-old girl. He's on probation, and now a 16-year-old girl comes forward saying that he raped her. School administrators knew all of this, but yet they still allowed him to be inside of that school taking classes. Okay. Does she just have one minute? We just want to we, we just want to ask her why she allowed a 21-year-old convicted sex offender to take classes in this school. She's in a meeting with a with a teacher, and you have to go through the office of communication. Okay, could we wait for her to come back out? We feel like this is a this is a question that parents yeah, and think, students deserve to have answered. I'm just relaying I mean, the message from her. I we felt that. the principal needed to explain that. She will not be meeting with you. She said everything has to go through the um, communications office at, or our law office, okay? Okay. Uh, any particular reason why she doesn't want to answer this question? That's all I have. Okay. Can we continue to wait here for her in case she no. changes her mind? No, she, she's not going to be available. Okay. Um, if we waited outside, would she come outside and talk to us? No. Like if we waited next to her? Are we being Oh, yeah. Videotaping. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yes. Well, I appreciate that. Well, I mean, you got two cameras right here. I identified myself. I, you know, we... Okay. All right, well, that's over. She's, she will not be meeting with you. I don't know what, I don't know how else to make that any clearer to you. Okay. okay. And what is your name, miss? Well, after the principal refused to speak with us, we felt that we were ready to move forward with our first story. And after it ran... The community was outraged. Parents, lawmakers, everybody was asking the question, how could this be allowed to happen? How can this man, this uh, sex offender, be on the registry and still be sitting in a classroom? Sick. <laughs> Something needs to be done. We need answers to this. As far as I'm concerned, there should be no permission granted. This scares the, the living daylights out of me. More than stunned that this happened. This is a very serious situation. Sex offenders have no place in our schools, period. Hello. Oh, hi. 
Miss Udana. Um, my name's Chris. This is Carrie. We spoke with you a, a few months ago. We realized that we really didn't know much about Santino Sudano outside of what we had read in court records when he was arrested. When we first started investigating this story, we did go to his family's house, but his mother wasn't very interested in speaking with us. So after a few months, we went back to the house and we tried again. As you know, we've done some stories on your son over the past couple of months, and we really want to get your side of the story. Would you have a, a minute that we can ask you a few questions? Not right now. I'm not in the mood. Is there a time that we could come back that would work better for you? When there's no cameras on. Each time that we visited the house, we knew that the family was going to be upset. But it was important for us to give them the opportunity to tell their side of the story. So when we got to the house, the mother had come outside. She didn't want to speak. Then she went back inside to get her husband, Santino's father. And when he came out, we didn't know what to expect. Hello. Hello. Hi. Please get off my property. Don't just walk on my property. Right now. Okay. Where are you from? We're from Fox 45. Right. We've been doing some stories. Oh, I know. It's, I know what you've been doing. Okay. And we just wanted to get your side of the story and get Mr. Sudano's side of the story. Now, if they're all this time. Well, we've been we've here been before. Here. No, you never called. We came here a few months ago, and we spoke. Came here. You never called me. But we spoke to your wife right here a few well, months ago. Whatever, man. I've seen well, the stories. It's it's complete. You know what? Okay. One sided. I listen. You want to talk to me? I do. You give me your card. Maybe we'll sit down and we'll talk. We walked away. We went back to our car to be able to get a business card that we could give to him. But while we were gone, our photographer kept his camera rolling. Okay, well, do me a favor, man. I'm, I'm on public property. I'm on I know the street. You're on public property. Listen, I understand that. And I know I don't have any right to privacy being in public. That's just doing my job, man. You know, a lot of people do their jobs and people wind up getting hurt from those jobs, don't they? We came back from the car and the father was clearly agitated. I had a business card, I gave it to him. He then asked us to leave and we were going to leave, but he just kept talking. Let me tell you something, look. I saw a little bit of what you put on there, okay? okay. I saw you get that girl on, put her in shadow. That girl, everything that came out of her mouth was a lie. And you just put it on there like it was the truth. Well, we did speak with her later when right. she identified herself. I mean, I could say herself. anything, couldn't I? I could say anything, right? Does that make it true? Does it make it true? No, it doesn't. And you're not... I, I understand that you're upset, listen, but listen, that's why we want to speak with you I, and get do your... Do you have any kids? I do, sir. How old are your kids? They're young. Yeah. Have you spoken to Santino? No, and how, how's he doing? How would you be doing if you were ripped? He's never been in trouble, ever. And you're ripped from your family, and then you're put in jail. He's been in jail for over six months now. I received a horrifying phone call to pick up my child from the Towson Police Station. Just a vague statement. Get there. All I'm told is they're in the sex crimes unit. Wait and wait and wait. And by the time I'm finally told, I was so horrified. And then what I was told was even more horrifying. I've just been trying not to think about it and talk to my mom a lot. Well, it was scary for me because I figured people might see me differently and it made me feel like dirty and gross. How could you? And if your child was there, would you still have signed that piece of paper? And now I'm sitting with a victim that's my child. And I want to know why. And anybody who would be dumb enough to sign a form to allow it, parent or not, that is sick. No, I don't want you to come back. 
Our stories are nonsense, Listen, but we you heard what I said. I'll speak with his lawyer, and I'm going to do what his lawyer advises me to do for the benefit of my son. You have a good day. And do not, do not trespass on my property again. Okay? You are not allowed on my property. You've been notified. Okay? Baltimore County Public Schools does not like to look bad. There is a history in this school system of sweeping problems under the rug. And in 2018, they got caught up in a major scandal. Their superintendent went to jail for lying on his financial disclosure forms. So in 2019, they got a new superintendent. And we in the media felt like this was going to be a new start. We were finally going to get some transparency, some accountability in the school system. All right, guys, let me, let's put this right here. It's July of 2019 and Baltimore County Public Schools finally gets a new superintendent, Dr. Daryl Williams. And on his first day on the job, he grants us an interview. So we go to central office, we set up, we sit down with him and we ask him straight up, is your administration going to be different? So you do believe in transparency and as far as the media is concerned, you will make yourself available. I will make myself available. I'll make sure our, our cabinet members, if I'm not, that uh, we have a spokesperson on behalf of the superintendent. I've watched that over the years um, from my previous district where uh, there was a sense of transparency and allowing the district to respond based on what we know. So when incidents happen, I think it's important to tell the truth. When this story aired, it blew up. Everybody was asking the question, how could this possibly be allowed to happen? And we were hearing from everybody except Dr. Darrell Williams. He refused to address this situation. So one morning, the county executive announced that he's going to have a press conference. They don't say what it's about. We have no idea what the topic is, but we decide that we're gonna go. So we grab a camera and head out. Well, good morning and thank you uh, for joining us today. I like you, was shocked, dismayed, furious, and frustrated. I was appalled to hear what happened at Parkville High School. So as soon as this press conference starts, we realize it is solely about our investigation in the Parkville. And standing up there at the podium, you have state and county lawmakers that are calling for new laws so this cannot happen again and students cannot be put in danger this way. And County Executive Johnny Olszewski he gets up to the podium and he takes a stand. Sex offenders have no place in our schools, period. The county executive was clearly outraged, so I asked him if he's gonna use his position to call for the person to be fired who made this decision. So what should happen with those people in the school system, and, and those people are still in these positions, so how can people at home who send their kids to Parkville be assured that those kids are safe when the people that made this decision as far as we're aware, are still in these same positions. That question should be asked to the school superintendent, Dr. Williams. He will not talk to us, so we well, can't I, And I cannot make him talk to you. We are going forward to make sure this does not happen again. Most every major political player in the county was at this press conference except one, Dr. Williams the superintendent of the school system where this happened was not there. Instead, he sent a communication specialist and we realized that this may be our only chance to ask somebody from the central office about what happened at Parkville. How do you assure parents that their kids are safe when the people who made this decision are still in the school system? It was a decision that was supported. Um, so what we would tell our- uh, Who supported it? A whole bunch of different people. The, but basically, the the bottom line is this: the the student had the right to an education. In hindsight, was this the wrong decision to make to allow a sex offender into a school and not alert the parents or students that he's there? I think students who are 
accused of crimes are on the sex registry. It's public information. So it's, it, we want to make sure that there's a safe and secure situation for everybody involved. So you're standing by your decision? This was the right decision at the time? I think what we're talking about today is what we're going to do going forward. Were you aware that there's a third victim that came forward in November of 2018 that was a student at Parkville High School? I can't talk about that. You can't tell me if you were aware of that? Uh, no. Why? I can't. There's, uh, there, there's all kinds of legal there's no There's no privacy issues. I'm just asking if you were aware that in November of 2018, a third student who was a Parkville student came forward to police with rape accusations. Uh, again, I can't answer that. Yep. I hold them responsible. Either they were just not doing their jobs or they just didn't like me. Baltimore Town Hall. And I'm Chris Papps. Tonight we'll be discussing serious concerns over students. This is the first time that people in the community had a chance to finally get some answers. Never told me why? Why was he given permission? What makes him so special? That nobody cared. A girl comes forward, nobody cares. My daughter comes forward, now he's in jail? Now? What is it going to take before anybody cares? No one wants to hear about a sex offender giving out Halloween candy, anything. But you all let him go to a school and give him a hunting ground. We know the details, and it's time that whether the, the, the board, I would hope, and Dr. Williams start calling publicly to fire the principal. That's what we need now. You can't just say it's a personnel issue and we're not going to talk about it. Parents deserve answers, and these legislators here um, and the folks uh, on the panel are, we're going to push until we get an answer, but it's not okay. There was a lot of anger in this room. People wanted the principal and the superintendent to lose their jobs. They wanted them to be fired. And then one person got up and spoke. And when she did, the entire mood of that room changed. Yeah, thank you for coming to tell your story. I do have anxiety, and I was getting a little nervous being in front of 30 cameras. I'm here today for change, because now there is another child that's been hurt. And I told them when I reported Santino that, that there, I wasn't going to be the only one, that there was going to be another one somewhere down the road. And now there is. Now, we want to be clear. There are now three underage girls who have come forward. Yes. One, there has been a conviction, which is why he's on the sex offender registry. A second girl has pressed charges, second underage girl, uh, Baltimore County student. That is why he's in jail right now. now. I have two children in the public school system. I cannot begin to comprehend what you have gone through. It is absolutely unconscionable that that school administration did not do more to help you and protect you. And I can't understand why. Is there anything that you would like to say to the lawmakers or your educators tonight? Please don't let this happen again. Because this is going to affect me for the rest of my life. And yes, I have gotten, I've moved past that point in my life, but, but there's still damage that's going to take me another 10 to 15 years to go through. And I don't want any other kid to go through what I did. Since you first spoke to us six months ago, additional criminal charges have been filed against a man that you say raped you. The state's attorney's office has changed its policies on how it alerts the school system when students have been convicted of a crime. The school board has written a new policy concerning sex offenders and a new state law banning sex offenders from being students in a school. It's been written, it was passed unanimously by the Senate, the governor has said he'll sign it. All that has happened in six months. It's a lot. It's a lot of work to be done. <laughs> and it all started with you. Yeah. I like that. This was a six-month investigation, and in that time, we were really able to see Kai change and mature and get stronger throughout the process. She was the very first interview that we did during this investigation, and the first time we met her, she appeared terrified. And she didn't want to show her name. She wanted us to change her voice. And we showed her in silhouette. 
I was still scared and hiding from everything. Like hands down, like I was scared of people finding out that it was me or looking at me a different way or treating me a certain way. I know I'm not lying about this. I know what I went through. I know what haunts me in my dreams at night. I literally had a nightmare about him this morning. Can you imagine that every single day waking up from a nightmare from your rapist and having somebody in your face telling you you're lying about it? That's ridiculous. Like this, this, is, this is why sexual assault victims don't come out because we're always told that we're lying about something when we aren't. Like you really think we wanna relive this trauma again? Six weeks after that first interview, Kai contacted us and she said that she was ready to come forward. And personally, I was uncomfortable because generally in, in media, we don't put people who are alleging to be victims of sexual assault or people who are victims of sexual assault, we don't put their names out there. We don't put their faces out there. We try to protect them. So. When she came to me and she said that she wanted to come forward, I, if anything, I was trying to convince her not to. She said that she felt compelled to do it for the other two alleged victims of Santino Sudano because they were a lot younger than her and they couldn't do it. But at this point, Kai was 18 and she was an adult and she was said that she's the only person who could speak. I felt like out of the three of us, somebody had to raise their hand and it ended up being me. I, wanted, I also wanted to take the bullet for them. Like putting my face out there puts my face at risk. I didn't want them going through that. Can you talk to us about your relationship with the other two girls? <laughs> I would do anything for them too. Like, <laughs> I'd move mountains to keep them safe and healthy. We, we're like this, all three of us. We're like a magic little trio, I like it. We're just trying to help each other heal. He told me that I was never gonna be anything in life. I was just gonna be a junkie and I was just gonna OD behind 7-Eleven. And it's just funny because two years later, I'm graduating high school, something he can't relate to. I am going to college, I'm gonna be a vet. I finally found the love of my life and I'm gonna rescue cats. And I'm not in jail being charged with raping little kids. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's all I had to say about that. What started as one young woman telling her story ended up exposing a lot of problems in the educational and criminal justice systems in Maryland we found that there are errors in the sex offender registry. Santino Sudano's sex offender registry page had errors in it, which may have contributed to why he was in Parkville High School for a year and a half before anybody realized it. We don't know if he's the only one. We're still trying to find out how many sex offenders have been allowed to attend Baltimore County Public Schools.